Hi everyone, thank you uh, for having me here today. Great to follow Doc. He answered a lot of the questions that we're going to go over today. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, and Lewis, who's also here, we're here from uh, Plant Power Metro New York. Um, I, uh, I grew up in the restaurant business. Uh, my family actually opened a restaurant uh, the same year I was born. Uh, so one of the things I enjoyed doing was going down the restaurant uh, to, uh, to be with my family. I enjoyed cooking at a young age. My grandfather actually uh, built me a stool so I could see over the stovetop. My specialty was uh, Mickey Mouse pancakes. So if you guys are gonna be here on Saturday, I think we're gonna do some nice pancakes. So. But I grew up in the Midwest. Uh, meat uh, and potatoes, uh, Kansas City actually, so we're known for our barbecue. Um, so the word vegan or vegetarian was something that uh, was nowhere uh, around. I, I don't think I knew any vegetarians or vegans growing up. Um, but my passion in the restaurant business was making people happy. Um, and one of the things I really enjoyed was feeding them healthy foods. So uh, that led me to the path where I am today. Um, in my 30s, I decided to try to eat red meat once a week, and that was a huge, uh, uh, it was really tough to do that. Uh, I would crave a hamburger or a piece of filet, and I would cheat to get to that. Say Wednesday was my day that I would have red meat, and by Saturday or Sunday, I would have meatballs, you know, with the family on Sunday. It was really hard to do that, but I figured out a way to do it, and I started to feel better, and then from there, I cut out pork and chicken and fish, and uh, then I got married, uh, moved to New York, and uh, one day my wife was cooking breakfast and I told her that I decided to stop eating eggs, milk, cheese, and butter. And uh, my wife will tell you to this day that uh, I should have told her before because maybe we wouldn't have gotten married. And, <laughs> and the reason for that is she loves cooking and you know it's such a family thing to do, and, and now it's like, what, what am I gonna cook here, you know? And, and myself, I also believe that too. What am I going to eat from here out? Because I grew up on the, um, the food pyramid. And everything on the food pyramid was everything that I had given up at the time. Fortunately, uh, in 2019, I found Plant Power Metro New York. They're the ones that brought us here today. And, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, we'll be Plant Power Metro New York. They were having potlucks in the city uh, once a month. And uh, we would bring vegan food. And uh, I learned from doctors, nutritionists, uh, how to not only survive, but thrive on a plant-based diet. Um, uh, now I'm working for an organization called Wellness in the Schools. We've partnered up with the mayor's office in New York City, and I go into the schools. I go to one different school every month, and we help the cafeteria make healthier food, plant-forward, scratch-made, and less processed. So that's how I got here. I'm now a Food for Life instructor with the Physicians Committee. I'll tell you a little bit about that, but I want to introduce uh, Lewis, who's uh, going to help us today with our food demo. And he also has a path, uh, if you don't mind, can you just tell a little bit how you got here? Um, and then well, over here, over here. Okay. I'm originally from Spain. I lived here already for 21 years, but you know, I was initially a professor of economics, then I started my own business. And middle age, I was overweight, I had these health issues, I wanted to run, I was getting injured all the time. And finally, I found how plants can be helpful for preventing injuries. And so I found also uh, the China study, a book, and after that I said, okay, I have to switch. No? And then last seven years, seven and a half years ago, I switched to a plant-based diet. My health improved dramatically. I was able to start running, and you know I feel so much better. Last year, I ran my first marathon. And I keep running consistently, and mm -hmm. now I'm trying to share with others the benefits of a lifestyle, healthier lifestyle, not I use plant, plant-based. No? And so I'm joining with. Plant Power Metro New York to, to, to spread the message. And also, I'm going to see if I can become a food for life instructor too. So that's my story. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So, Plant Power, uh, well, before we go there, uh, everyone should have got a uh, question here. Uh, if not, you could scan it on here. We could uh, bring you one afterwards. But, uh, make sure you fill out uh, 
the questionnaire and the survey uh, before you leave today. Uh, here's what we're going to do today. We have an opening. We're going to have a video with uh, Neil Barnard, and he is the doctor that started the Physicians Committee. Uh, we're going to do a little review and discussion about the video, and then we're going to do a cooking demo. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make some uh, plant-based dishes. We're going to taste it all, see what you guys think. Uh, then we'll wrap it up, see if we have any questions. And anything that we can't answer, uh, Lewis will write down, and we'll get to our dietitians or doctors that are part of uh, our groups, and we'll either send you the answers to these emails, or we'll talk about it on Saturday and Monday if you guys are around for that. Um, and at any moment, if you have any questions, uh, please stop me, and we can, uh, we can talk about it. Uh, this is Plant Power Metro New York, and Power are the first local communities to find better health and overcome chronic diseases through whole food plant. Uh, based nutrition. If you decide to uh, continue on this path, uh, it's a great community. Uh, there's a ton of events uh, and lots of tools and recipes to help you along. Um, as you'll find out, if you decide to try to eat more plant-based, we're surrounded. Uh, the world is surrounded by non-healthy uh, items, so it can become overwhelming. It can become very hard, as you probably know. Um, but this is a community with World Vision Vegan um, that supports you and, and finds ways to, uh, to help you survive and, and thrive. Uh, the Physicians Committee is dedicated to saving and improving human and animal lives through plant-based diets and ethical and effective sciences research. They also have uh, a fantastic webpage. They do these Food for Life classes. Um, if you like this class, there's more that you can see online. You don't have to come to an actual spot. Uh, I think it's great that you can come because now you can taste and see how easy it is to uh, make some of these recipes. Um, let's see. Before we go any further, if you don't mind, would you guys like to, some of you, introduce yourselves and maybe tell us why you're here and what We try to eat healthy, like I'll make a dish like that, like a salad, a healthy salad like that, but we are 
I'm married to an Italian, so my husband likes to have meat every night. So if I make a vegetable dish, he'll say, what the hell is this? Where's the meat? <laughs> you know, so that's our biggest problem. So if I'm cooking meat for him, I should say for me and my daughter, well, I don't have to cook meat for us, but I get weak and I'm like, oh, you know what? It's a steak or it's a ham or it's a chicken or fish. We do eat healthy, but I guess not as healthy as we should. You know, I could probably eat. We, we do eat a lot of vegetables. But um, I guess it's just training yourself. You have to train yourself to say this is what I want, you know, and just stick with it. Yeah. So we're trying. My daughter and I are here tonight because we want to learn like a better way to eat. Nice. So, yeah. we, we definitely give you all those tools. And uh, I also come from an Italian background and my father is the same way. My mom eats like me, or I eat like my mother. and. For the last 10, 15 years, she's been making a turkey, regardless, because we have to feed the family. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Glad you're here. Anyone else have one more person and then we'll, uh, we'll continue on? I think or, I can go. Yeah? I think. Yeah, great. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Simone. Uh, I'm here tonight because I need to change my, my diet. <laughs> For weight loss purposes and just for uh, better, you know, um, healthier choices. So um, I know there's stuff like Vegan Dale and you know different um, events like that that one can go to to experience a lot of different, um, you know, vegan lifestyle choices. I think it's still kind of new to some people because people are still sort of getting used to the concept of doing a lot of stuff with, um, you know, vegan uh, meal choices. My family's Caribbean, and so we eat a lot of rice, we eat a lot of meats and you know, fish and things like that. So I want to try to learn how to incorporate um, vegan, veganism into my lifestyle. Of course. And you're so right. When I, when I became a vegan, when I, when I started eating vegan, I, everything I was eating was processed junk. It was no good. And then with plant power, it more showed me that, you know, this is the way to actually be better and, and not just try to find food that will make me full. So this class is going to be great for that. And something that we differentiate is Vegan, I mean, French fries are vegan, right? That's right, Oreos. <laughs> Oreos are vegan. But what particularly Plan Power Adventure New York and World Vegan Vision, we focus on whole food plant-based, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, food that is not processed, food that you can, you know, the chef will show you, like, food from, yeah, you know, all the beans, colors there, yeah, all exactly. the beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to sort of share with you today, that vegan, you know, yes, it stands for cruelty-free, compassionate, compassionate food, but it can be very highly processed. Mm -hmm. But whole food plant-based is the way to go if you're talking about if you want to improve any health outcomes. So that's what the chef is going to focus on. Okay. One more. Okay. No? Yes, please. Uh, my name is Ashira, and uh, I resonate with most of the things that everyone said, and uh, thank you for some of the reasons. But a couple of things I wanted to, well, uh, that is the reason why I'm here because I got COVID twice and it was a long COVID that actually made life worse, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I really want to, um, you know, make, have a diet that actually would help me uh, deal with the long COVID symptoms even if I get it again. Um, and uh, secondly, I grew up in coastal cities, so fish has always been a big part of my diet. I can I can let go of meat and, and everything too, but this is something I'm not really sure how to completely eliminate from my right. diet. Yeah. yeah fish. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some really want to know some uh, good recipes and delicious recipes that I can indulge myself with whenever I'm going to yeah go eat fish, I guess. And I'm in climate change field, so mm -hmm. you know the yes. whole um, vegan, um, like how environmentally friendly it is. That's also a big factor. So uh, yeah, nice. great. All right, amazing. Okay, let's get just action. just one more, one more. Yes. Uh, my name is Avinash Kachi, and I'm a volunteer for World Vegan Vision. And the reason I'm here is because I'm an example of how a vegan diet can change your health. Seven years ago. I was run, running about seven miles a day 
and uh, having knee problems, ankle problems, while trying to keep my cholesterol down without medication. Cholesterol was 265 and my weight was like 175. And uh, then my niece told me that my brother went vegan after he watched uh, What the Health. So I said, what is that? Let me watch it too. And I watched What the Health and I was a vegetarian at the time actually, even with, and still I had a high cholesterol. So I saw that uh, I was, uh, how much cruelty goes in eggs and dairy, and I instantly stopped that. I was, I was uh, unaware of all those things that goes in production of vegetarian food. And three months later, I got checked and my cholesterol was 165 from 265, just going from vegetarian to vegan. I was, I was born and raised most of my life. I, most of my life I was a vegetarian. Occasionally I would eat shrimp for taste or something like that. But I was using a lot of cheese. I watched Food Network like I was crazy, you know. <laughs> Beach watching Food Network and trying all the things. So, and you know, being a foodie, I was overweight. So, uh, just letting you all know that vegan diet will work if you go on the healthy vegan diet path. Uh, eat as much food as you can and it will work. Uh, some, some people may have special things like you have and you may have to get uh, a special attention but that's not that but you can still go vegan and the biggest so, so I went vegan for health reasons but now I am vegan for animals and that is the only thing that keeps me going and volunteering. So we are not killing any animals for our food. Yeah, that all comes, but uh, hurting another being for food is just uh, senseless. Compassion on your plate, right? Thank you for st sharing your story, Avinash. Big yes. So glad to be here, everyone. A pleasure to be out here. Sharing some fun recipes. One thing I recommend is trying the online 21 day vegan Kickstart program. You can find that on our Metro New York's uh, website. And we actually have mentors in the community that will team up with you and, and support you along the way. So something to check out um, later on. Um, let's see. All right, so here's what we're going to try to learn today. Uh, we're going to learn today. We're going to uh, talk about it uh, throughout the whole class. Uh, we're going to explore the powerful impact that diet can have on your cardiovascular health. Uh, we'll be discussing groundbreaking research that shows how simple dietary changes can not only prevent but potentially reverse heart disease. Uh, the key, three key areas will examine the role of diet and heart disease. The way to get your greens in, to get your vegetables in, uh, it calls for three cups of spinach. I'm going to put six cups though because I think we have close to 15, two, four, six, eight. We have a little more than 15, and the three cups are going to make some for 15 samples, so we might have extra, so somebody might have to take some home. Um, but again, this is uh, something that will make you full. Uh, it's filled with fiber, filled with nu nutrients, and there's no fat in it. Uh, so let's start off with a nice, great, great, great spinach. We'll start off with six cups. sweet or not sweet. I did no prep for a gentleman that uh, had some uh, health issues and I used to go over his house once a week and make him food for the rest of the week and I would make him this smoothie and he would go into his fridge uh, throughout the week and that's four cups one more. Oh I don't have a place in New York. My family's restaurants called Anthony's. It's in Kansas City, Missouri. And it opened in uh, the 70s, and my brother Vito now runs it. Uh, so if you're ever in Kansas City, check it out Chiefs game. Really? We'll find out who they are. Um, they might know the restaurant. All right. What's that? I said my nephew might know his place. He does black 
You guys what? Last one. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Kansas City is a nice place to, to be. He's from New York? No, he's from Kansas City. He's from Kansas City. Really? Small. Okay. I'm going to ask you about my All right. So we got pineapples. I grabbed frozen pineapples just because I like my smoothies to be cold. So I figured this would be a good way to make it cold. I also love ice just in case. So it calls for three fourths a cup of pineapples. Uh, three fourths a cup. I'm going to put a. Uh, here. You guys have the Vitamix? Do you have the Vitamix at home? Good. These are these are great. They have smaller uh, versions. They have uh, larger ones. Um, this is the big one. You can get it online. You can get a refurbished model for inexpensive, and it's, uh, it's great for smoothies or soups. Uh, highly recommend them. All right, we got uh, green grapes. Uh, one and a half cups. And again, this you guys tailor this the way you guys like it, depending on if you like it sweet or not sweet, um, and what you want to add into it. You know, we talked about flaxseed having omega threes. You can throw fla flaxseed in here. You can throw chia seeds in here. I like to get turmeric in my system uh, on a daily basis, so I'll throw turmeric in mine. Uh, I love ginger, so I'll throw ginger in mine. Um, and. If you don't want it so sweet, maybe you don't use the pineapples. Uh, Alright, and then it asks for a little bit of water and a vanilla. Let's see. So no plant-based powder? What's that? You don't need to add plant-based powder? No, no need to. I, I don't use any, uh, when I first started in this way, I was using plant uh, protein to try to get my protein. But I learned that if you're just eating uh, colorful meals, if you're eating your greens, and uh, it's got all the protein, like we said, all the, uh, all the nutrients that you need. You just got to uh, eat enough of it, you know. And the great thing about this, eating this way, is you don't have to count calories. You don't have to restrict yourself. You eat until you're full because you're eating, like Doc said, fiber. And that fiber is, you know, so good for us. Uh, so I did bring ice just because... Yeah, I'm just gonna use three fourths of water. Okay. Call for it. Yeah, you, you know, if you want it, like I believe that soy milk adds uh, a lot of vitamins to my diet, so I'll add soy milk to mine. But if you, for some reason, don't like soy milk, you don't have to. Um, I add sometimes uh, if I'm trying to get my nuts for the day, maybe some peanut butter uh, or almonds or what have you, and that's it. Uh, let's blend this up. I got a feeling I'm gonna have to add a little more water. Yeah, indeed. Let's, let's see what it is. Yeah, for sure. Once a week, and I would come back at the end of the week and he'd have maybe one last left. 
I mean, I'd make him, I'd probably make him double this for the week. Uh, all right. Yeah, so make, me, I, personally, um, I don't every day, but it's a great, easy way to get my spinach in, to get my, my leaves. My goal is to eat two cells a day, two big cells a day, but if I'm too busy with work, and I can make a couple of these and have them in my refrigerator, it's an easy way to get all that. And notice that we didn't use any juices. We're right. using whole fruits, so we're but getting that fiber. But if you make this, how long does it last? I used to let it last for a week, but, but, but my rule would probably be more like five days. Okay. But it would be fine. I'm sorry? It doesn't get segregated, but you know, the, the, the water kind of... You, you might just pick that. Yeah. 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 Actually, with days. some vegetables, it may even uh -huh. go darker. Yeah. And I prefer to make it yeah. every, yeah. You know, every day and right. just bring it right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it oxidizes, yeah. you know. And it also tastes uh, off. Yeah. yeah. So, best to yeah. drink yeah. fresh. Uh, if you could do this, I'll start on the next one. Okay. If you need to make more, just uh, make enough for one, two, three, and fifteen. And also, when you store it, you should fill it up so that. Thank you. What do you guys think of the smoothie? You guys had time to taste it? Yeah, I have the taste of pineapple. I think the pineapple masked the banana flavor. <laughs> yeah, I probably did. I don't know too many guys in there. When you guys make these on your own, you guys can make them however you want. You can put stuff you can put mangoes instead of pineapples. Uh, you know, just add as much fruit and vegetables as, uh, as you like. Peaches. Of course, yeah, peaches, especially if you want to buy fresh. Um, all right, so we're going to make one of the chili dogs. Half a day's worth of uh, requirement. What's that? It is like almost half a day's worth of requirement for everybody. Yeah. Kilogram or pound of your weight. So 
0.8 grams per gram of your weight. 8.8 grams per kilogram, right? Of your body weight. So typically, like if you know, for someone who is 120 pounds, it would come up to about 60 to 65 grams of protein. 60 to 65 grams. However, like Chef said and you know, we spoke earlier, if you eat whole food plant-based, everything has protein in it for beans, right? They all have protein. Um, even white rice, rice has 4 percent, 5 percent protein. So, so people discard it like, oh, white is just, it's carbohydrate, but it has got 5 percent protein. So everything adds up, like it's an add additive, right? If you add quinoa to this, it will have again protein to it. So you know that will make, make it up. So you don't have to depend on any, you know, the, what kind of protein is processed. Uh, yeah, last year when I was preparing for my marathon, I was worried if I was having enough protein. Right. So one day I wrote, I wrote down everything that I ate that day. And then I found the protein. Yeah, I was getting 1.6 grams. Right. Yeah. So I remember right. one day, I got plenty of protein only with one food. So it's like it's additive. We are used to thinking of protein as a portion on the plate, like you know, chicken breast or salmon. We think in terms of macronutrients. We shouldn't think in terms of. We should think about a varied diet rather than macronutrients, like very much carbs and no. Don't think about carbs or protein or anything like that. Just try to get as much variety as you can. I didn't think of that rice. Rice, wheat, everything has protein. <laughs> Brown rice is better than uh, white rice. Yeah, the less processed, the better. And then again, the other argument people will say that you know it's not a complete protein, but if you eat all the varieties in plant-based, you you will have a complete protein. No, actually. Yeah, it is true that uh, animal meat is complete protein, but just by mixing rice with a bean, you get complete protein. Most cultures in the world, like uh, the South Americans and Central Americans use rice, I mean corn and beans. Uh, Chinese people use uh, rice and beans. Uh, Indians use rice and beans and wheat. So by just mixing two or three different ingredients, different uh, foods, you can make complete protein. It's, it's so good. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. it's not like it stays incomplete forever and you are losing out. And there are a couple of foods which are complete protein. Like I think quinoa is, quinoa is a complete protein and millet, some millet. There is a, there is a millet called ragi. Uh, it's called ragi in Indian language. That is a complete protein too. Complete food. Yeah. And soy is also complete protein. So it has all got all like nine or thirteen or whatever amino acids in it. That that's what makes it complete. I have friends in Australia. Yeah, so you know, both of them organic spicy and non-GMO. Like chili peppers, 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 chili Okay, while you guys, uh, the only thing I did was uh, I added uh, three teaspoons of chili, two teaspoons of cumin, and one teaspoon of oregano. No salt, no pepper. Uh, no salt in this dish, no. And uh, I'm going to add cilantro to all of them except one and a little lime juice at the end, and that's going to bring out all the flavor I think we're going to need. Uh, I added fire roasted tomatoes, which I found at Trader Joe's. This dish really, if I would have had everything cut up, I could have had this made in like 10 minutes. So it just really breaks that whole thing about eating healthy takes a lot of time to make food.
It doesn't. We just have to learn. We have to retrain ourselves what to eat. So we're going to serve this now for you, and then we'll do our chocolate mousse, which I made earlier today because I needed it to firm up and get cold. Thank you. 